Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Tipsquirrel.com, the free website for everything Photoshop and Lightroom. In this video, I'll be taking a look at Tone Curve, both in Adobe Camera Raw and in Lightroom, and seeing what abstract effects we can make. Let's jump in and see how it's done. So here I am in Bridge, and I've got my image all ready to go, and I'm going to be using Adobe Camera Raw to talk through this tutorial but it can also be done in Lightroom, and we'll scooch over and have a look at that at the very end. Okay, let's open this up in Adobe Camera Raw, and I'm not going to touch anything here at all in the basic panel. I'm going to go across to the next one along, which is our Tone Curve. So if I tap on that, and when you open it up, you're going to get something like this if you've never used it before, and we've got highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. Now these relate completely to what's going on in the basic panel as well. But what we want to do is we want to click on point. So let's click there. Now you see we've got this line running up, much like we do when we run curves in Photoshop. And yep, we can actually get a hold of this and make the same or similar curves as we can in Photoshop. But this image isn't really one that can be saved with that. I was trying for something a bit more abstract and this really didn't work at all. I'm going to scooch it round a bit, just, there we go, that makes a bit better. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this into a negative. Now everything down this left hand end relates to all the dark. So if I bring that up, it's going to make all the blacks white. And then if I bring this one down, it's going to make all the whites black and everything in between varying degrees. So basically what we've done is we've created a negative. Now that isn't what I want either, but just so we can experiment a little bit, well, let's bring uh, this one down a little bit and you can see how we can alter this to our heart's content. I'm just, if I've got a point here, I can just drag it off and it disappears. Now what I want to do here is I want to bring this one up and then this one up to where it started and then put a point in the middle and drag it down. So what we've got going on here is a lot of highlights going down to blacks that are in the middle and then up again into the highlights. So the whites are exactly as they were, but black is now reversed. This means that when we go back to my basic panel here, when I change the exposure, something strange happens. Let's bring the exposure down and you can see that it kind of lines it all up and then it washes it all out. If I go the other way, we bring back some of the highlights, but look at those shadows coming out this lovely blue. And already this is starting to look much better. So I'm going to add just a little bit of clarity to this. And then I'm going to bring down the vibrance and up the saturation. Everything seems a bit reversed now, doesn't it? Now you'll notice here, talking of reversed, that shadows, if I move them to the right, will darken them. Whereas if I move them to the left, will lighten them. And the same is true for the blacks. And I'm actually going to make them a little bit darker there and a little bit lighter there. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Let's put a vignette on this. Go to the Effects tab here, and I can put a vignette on. So I bring this down, you'll see something quite strange happen. I'm going to bring the midpoint in right to the middle, and then bring this in, and you'll notice that we get our dark vignette, and then it goes white because of the way everything's reversed. So let's bring that down a little bit and then bring the feathering right up. Okay, just give that just a tad. And we're really starting to make this quite dramatic. While we're here, let's go over here to our graduated filter and let's pop one of those on. And you can see something strange is happening now. If I just pop all this back to how it was, if I bring down the exposure here, drops down those highlights, but look what it does to the shadows. So it actually looks now like the light is coming through between the columns. So I'm going to bring that just a little bit, and I'm going to give it quite a bit of clarity here just to enhance that. There we go. Let's go back to our magnifying glass, and then we can see each one next to each other, the before and after. Let's do that and see where we've come from and where we've gone to. So you can see I've made a much more abstract image just by using that tone curve. Now I promised you we'd have a look in Lightroom and sure enough, here we go. The tone curve does have a tab all of its own. And what you need to do is you need to come along and click on this icon here. 
at the moment it's already clicked but there we go that's the default position and then we click on that and then we can make our curves now this one i find a little bit more tricky but let's just bring that one down and like that and you can see that we've done it as easy as we did in adobe camera raw let's open basic up and we can make exactly the same kind of things there we go and let's go back to library because then i want to scooch this around just a little bit there we go and back into develop and we can go into effects and again do a nice little vignette there we are feather it up midpoint in here we are and a graduated filter as well there we go so we've done exactly the same in lightroom as we did in adobe camera raw I'm Eric Renault. Thank you very much for joining me here. Don't forget to subscribe. Maybe give me a like if you like this video and leave a comment and let me know how I'm getting on. Of course, you can find more from me and a whole load of other Photoshop nuts over at tipsquirrel.com. We'd love to see you there too. But for now, bye-bye.